Now, from the explosive surface of our own planet to the rocky landscape of another world. Over to you, Fran. That is right, Roma. I am actually here on Mars, if you couldn't tell, but I am not alone. Don't worry. I have some guides here. I've got Samit Mahajan and Hiroki Cook from University of Southampton. So why have we got a slice of Mars right here, Samit? Well, we've got a slice of Mars to actually explain the technology which we're developing in this part of uh, Enlighten Us program, a large collaboration between Nottingham, Edinburgh and Southampton, which is using a technology called Raman Spectroscopy. And Raman Spectroscopy, in, in Raman Spectroscopy, you shine a laser on a material, and the molecules in the material start to vibrate. And when they vibrate, they give off different colors. By recognizing the different colors, which is actually the chemical fingerprint, you can tell what the constitution of those chemicals are, whether they constitute might, might be life, or they might be disease, which I'm going to talk about later. Brilliant. And this is new technology, isn't it, with the laser, and then like sort of looking at different chemicals and going, okay, that one's made of this, this one's made of B, C, D, and E, and this one's made of that. That's correct. And NASA recognized this technology. It's actually an old technology, but reinvented re re because advancements in lasers, advancements in detection, and so on. But rec uh, NASA recognized the importance of it, and that's why they have it on their rover, currently looking for signs of life on planet Mars. So could we drive your rover? You can, absolutely. Actually, the big rover is a replica of their rover, but we have a smaller one to play a game with. This one little here. OK, I'm up for games. Hiroki, I've heard you've got a button to yep. press I'll down show you here. That. So the real rover, we'll point out just before we play the game, is modeled after Mars Perseverance using the same te Raman technology that is in Supercam and in Sherlock. This was built by our interdisciplinary team, so scientists from different disciplines came together, so physicists, chemists, biologists, mathematicians, computer scientists, to build this rover very similar to the NASA engineers who put the, together the real thing 140 million miles away. So the real and thing... this is smaller than the one that's on Mars, or is it the same size? The real one is the size of a hatchback car. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so today, yeah, we'll drive an even smaller one, because the big one Let's see for the moment, but you'll be able to go to each of these targets as it flashes around and we'll see if we fire our laser, look at our chemical fingerprint with Raman spectroscopy and see whether life there exists. Brilliant. And this is the controller That's here, it. right? So Do you trust me? I trust oh, you. Oh, you oh. might regret that. <laughs> Drive okay. the rover around, hit that button and we'll see whether there's life. We'll look okay. at the chemical fingerprint and see there's life. Okay, so we'll start the game. Oh, we'll so the lights move. Yep. All right. I thought I had it easy with that no, one. No, no, no. <laughs> Oh, it was that one. Oh, good, 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 okay. Oh, very good, go, very go, go. good. Go on. Oh, no, 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 too much, too much. <laughs> let's wait, let's wait. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 brilliant. Oh. Yeah, yeah, line up just a little bit more. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> so close. Oh, back. Very good. Yeah, that's it. Straight, straight ahead. Oh, oh press the button. Yes. Press okay. the button. Yes. Oh, and it's, yep. Yeah. Oh. And it we brings have. up the chemical, fingerprint. the chemical fingerprint. And this so is this Raman spectroscopy. Raman spectroscopy giving us a unique identifier telling us whether there's evidence of past microbial life. Brilliant. And then you're using this to sort of draw on people's imaginations and entice right. them in. But the research that you're doing is over here, isn't it, Sarah? Absolutely, Thank absolutely. You. So, so, so this chemical fingerprint acquisition, as, as you just saw, which can happen on Mars, which is happening right now, Actually, we use that research, we use that idea to diagnose diseases, diseases much, much earlier than actually they manifest themselves. So we're looking at uh, diseases like osteoarthritis, and you see that you know uh, there are different fingerprints. This is how the fingerprints look like. You know, the, these peaks correspond to the vibrations, and a spectrum corresponds to the chemical fingerprint. That is absolutely fascinating. So you can use the same technology that they're using with the Mars rover to then analyze the chemical fingerprint of within bones when it comes to osteoarthritis yes. to detect the disease before the person that has it might even know. That's exactly correct. And then and, and you see as, as you can then do a library comparison with a database. And, and this is not the only application. That's the fantastic thing about it. Actually, you can apply this on other diseases. We are trying to do it in skin cancer, melanoma detection, but it could be applied to neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and so on and so forth. So it's really a fundamental discovery and which is having a large impact both in outer space, but also can make a real difference to the lives of people on planet Earth. Absolutely, it's a tool that you can use in many different ways. And to tell us more about this research, I know Roma, you have a guest with you right now. Fran, it looks like you're having a bit too much fun there, so um, thank you. I'm now delighted to be joined by Amanda Wright from Nottingham to tell us more. Amanda, welcome to the sofa. Thank as it you. Were. Um, can you tell us a bit about the project that you're working on? 
Yeah, yeah. So it's a large um, project that spans three different universities. So I'm from Nottingham University, as you said, and I've got some colleagues at Southampton and Edinburgh University who are also involved. And we're a big multidisciplinary team. There's um, biologists involved, clinicians, computer scientists, engineers, chemists. So we span a really wide range of disciplines. And we're all trying to take on quite a big challenge of trying to image deep inside the human body. So that's the, the challenge that we're trying to tackle at the moment. And that's a technology that's also used to look for life in outer space, like 320 million miles away. So can you tell me a bit about that link? Yeah, yeah. So some of the technologies we're using are linked to also what's happening um, on Mars at the moment. So there's a, a technology called Raman spectroscopy, and that's being used on the Mars rover to try to, under, um, try to identify life on Mars, which is very exciting. And we're using it to try to... Un uh, identify different molecules that are present in the body. So using it, we can identify if somebody's got arthritis, if a tissue is cancerous, if not cancerous, and it's all using that same technology. Now, um, the word spectrum is associated with light for yeah. me. So can you t talk us through what, what spectrum means to you and then what Raman spectroscopy means? Yeah, sure. So you're, you're right. We use a lot of different technologies involving light. So with Raman spectroscopy, you illuminate your sort of material of interest that you're trying to identify with a single wavelength or a single colour using a laser and that laser um, that all the individual molecules inside the material get excited by that laser and vibrate at different frequencies and depending on the frequency they're vibrating at they change the color of the light so essentially we put one color in mm -hmm. and we look at all the different colors that come back from that material and all those colors give us a kind of fingerprint or a spectra of what is present in that material so we can use it to identify at the molecular level what molecules are in a material. So on um, Mars, they use it to say, is carbon present and therefore is life present in this material we're looking at? And we use it to look at the human body to say, yeah, is, is, is there signatures of cancer here or is there signatures of arthritis? Um, what's going on? So can you tell me a little bit about maybe how a cancer cell would respond differently than a healthy cell to this particular technique? So it's all about the different molecules that are there and that are involved and how those molecules vibrate. So it lets us identify the different molecules that are present and, and how they're vibrating in the case of cancerous and healthy tissue, for example. Um, so for um, joints, we've got some people on the project who are very interested in arthritis and a, a signature there is how much collagen is surrounding the joint. So we and that's a type of it. protein, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah. we can use it to say, is it present or is it not present? And if it's degraded, how much is it degraded by? And therefore, um, what sort of um, state the disease is in? How is the disease progressing by looking at um, the collagen being present, like you said, this protein being present and the structure of it. So is it a diagnostic tool, a bit like MRIs and x-rays, for example? Yeah, yeah, that's how we plan to use it as a way of diagnosis. And the idea is that, um, that it, it's a, a sort of natural property of the material that you're looking at. So we're not having to put anything additional into the material and that makes it quite uh, minimally invasive. So we should be able to do it um, sort of in a way that doesn't um, sort of cut into the patient or cause any yeah. damage to the patient. Or you're not, you're not like ingesting dyes or, no. you know, other kinds of things like that. No. And, and could you tell me maybe a little bit how it might differ from x-rays or MRIs or CT scans? Because again, you know, those are forms of radiation, aren't they? Yeah. And, and yeah. we shouldn't be exposed to some of those forms of scanning too often. So maybe yeah. could you talk us through a bit about the different types of scanning yeah. and what's great about Raman yeah. spectroscopy? Sure, Thank no you. problem. Yeah, so um, x-ray, um, um, X-rays, as you mentioned, they're very good at showing up the bones in their body, something that we're all very familiar with. But yes, they can be damaging. So, you know, when you go to have an X-ray, the, the technician often has to stand away and you can only have so many in or a period of time. they've got like a time. lead apron or something yeah. on, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> that's correct. Yeah. So that's because it, they're very, very high energy and therefore they can cause some damage. They, they're what we call ionizing radiation. So they can change the property of what you're looking at. So right. light comes under the form of non-ionizing. So therefore it can't, um, it doesn't have enough energy to cause those changes. So if we choose our light very carefully, we can choose it in a way as not to damage what we're looking at. So that's a really nice benefit over X-ray. MRI, again, is a great technique, but it's, um, very, exp it's very expensive mm -hmm. in the clinic. It's very noisy. Some patients find it quite unpleasant. So we feel there's a real niche where um, kind of optical techniques can add. And actually, it has this really nice property of being able to, in the case of Raman, identify what molecules are present. And it also gives um, amazing resolution. So you can see things much smaller in the body than you can with MRI, you can see individual cells, individual components in cells. So the resolution you get um, far exceeds X-ray and MRI. So it's got a kind of, it's got some nice benefits to offer in that space. Oh, absolutely. So if yeah. I went to the hospital and I was going for, I don't know, is it called a Raman scan? What would that yeah. 
look and feel like as a patient? Yeah, so the technology um, is kind of working its way to that sure. point. Um, but yeah, it should be something a little bit like uh, maybe an OCT scan that you've had in your eye. That's an optical technique that scans in the body. So um, yeah, you'd have a, um, a light would be sh shone at the part of the body that um, you were having your scan. And then there'd be some clever sort of sensors and detectors looking at the wavelengths of the light coming back from the sample. And um, let's let's talk a little bit about history. I'm always so yeah. interested in the history of where things yeah. come from in science yeah. and engineering. So tell us a bit about Raman himself. Yeah, yeah. So Raman was an Indian physicist. Um, yeah, C.V. Raman was his name. And um, he discovered this, this um, property of this Raman spectroscopy and this shift in the wavelength of light. And he um, won the Nobel Prize for that discovery mm -hmm. in 1928. So yeah, made a very important contribution to science. So quite a kind of 20th century technique, yeah. really. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's the sort of Fundamentals of the technique have been known about for a long time, and it's one of those techniques that's constantly finding kind of new uses and new new ways in which we can employ it on Mars or in the body. Um, so yeah, so the, the challenge at the moment is really this trying to image deep into the human body, and, and we're sort of developing um, kind of new lasers and new ways of shaping light and some new AI to allow us to do that, to get the, the Raman spectroscopy signal from as deep as possible into the body, because that's where it has the applications. That's brilliant. And I just think it's wonderful that it's a multidisciplinary team because, you know, for me, that's such an important part of yeah. science, isn't it? Yeah, um, yeah. It's yeah. what I love and it's what I enjoy. <laughs> and it's really nice kind of just sharing ideas and you learn something at every meeting. So it's fantastic. No, that's brilliant. Thank you so much for your time, no Amanda. Problem. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you very much for having me.